So we're gonna start and or go ahead with the book about evil and and I do hope that the audio quality is fine. I am maybe as you can see if you are on the YouTube video, I'm using another quote unquote microphone. It is actually just some headphones. I do hope that it is fine. I hope that I'm kind of able to to mitigate the noise and, and mitigate everything. And uh, yeah, let me just see and check that a bit. This should be fine, I guess. Yeah, this should be fine. Um, so if left unchecked, evil escalate towards greater evil over time, which I do think that we have also seen that. I mean, in people like, I would say that we always tend to, you know, just grow in whatever we are doing, you know, out of drinking a bit becomes drinking a lot and so on and so on and so on. I think whatever the fuck the human being and or the human species is doing, we are always just seeking for greater and or bigger things. But yeah, let's see. The first steps in the direction of evil are usually small and if they were to stop there we would live in a much better world. Unlikely though, both history and laboratory studies show that violence tends to escalate over time. Yeah, I would also say so. Several factors come into play which decreases or increases the in intensity and gravity of the evil deeds. Which is not good, really not. By the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, before I forget it, and I haven't checked that, so it could be not that of a good idea. But let me do that. I don't know if it is better like that. Um, or maybe even worse, I, I don't hope so, but yeah, um, I do hope that I'm just lowering the amount of bullshitty uh, popping noises and asses and, and wind and stuff like that, but yeah. Among the factors which flame the spread of evil, desensitization, people get used to violence, stop protesting it and it becomes, uh, it becomes the new norm. There are exceptions where people move in the opposite direction though. Mutual revenge. Revenge tends to be uncalibrated and much stronger than the initial offense, naturally leading to escalate. By the way, let me... Yeah. It should be fine, you know. Getting away with it. When bystanders, police, the international community or anyone who could have done anything fails to intervene, evildoers feel emboldened. Example, Turkey with the Armenians. Yeah. You know, if nobody does something, we think, well, it is probably fine. And it is probably maybe even good, whatever the fuck we are doing. But no, it is not. You know, but, you know, it's, it's some deep psychology there, which I totally enjoy and totally like. And I um, feel like that we all can learn something from. And I do think that this is the case with quite a lot of things that we, we can transfer or translate certain things that we have seen in, in one part of life or in one area of life into something else or in another area of life. Meaning, okay, I know about evil now and I know about why we are maybe doing things and, and whatnot. So I can translate that into something else. I can translate that into other areas of my life, you know. I can't give an example for, for what, you know, but I have a strong feeling that we can and or some of you can. Lack of reaction from the victim. When the victim fails to react, for example, a spouse who does not leave the marriage, the abuser is likely to feel emboldened. Well, I don't know if react... Hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't know. It is a, it is a difficult question. And I am thinking about it because... Most often, and maybe this is also the case for you, I've been told by my mother and also other people, and I've also given the advice myself, that when somebody does something and not reacting to it, you know, in terms of, okay, somebody saying some weird words to you or, or something else, like, you know, something similar, then the best thing you can be doing is not reacting and not doing something and, and so on and so on and so on. But, but I do also very get that uh, to some other degree it's, it just encourages, like, I don't know, like, it is the same thing with getting away with it, you know, because nobody does something, there is no reaction, there is nothing happening, so it maybe is fine, and or, um, I don't know, I think we are seeking a reaction, I think we are seeking something, you know, some sort of, of answer to our, not question, but by, uh, or to our act and or our actions, 
And when we're not getting that, I do believe and I do think and I have a strong feeling. Uh, I'm not a psychologist, by the way, you know, I don't know anything. It is just assumptions. It is just some thoughts. And maybe you can just do something with them. Um, but I do think if there is no reaction, if there is no no answer to these quote unquote questions and or actions, then um, then we just go ahead and improve and or um, do more until we get an answer, which obviously is not that amazing. But yeah, anyway. Um, lack of reaction from the victim, which we have already gone through. Yeah, amazing. Group dynamics. Several group dynamics contribute to individuals' morals to be overridden. I don't get that, but anyway. Guilt, evil, and rationalization. Guilt is backward looking, and people will try to avoid behavior. They will make them, that will, what? Well, that will make them feel guilty. If people will want to engage in guilt producing behavior, they will be looking to make excuses before they act. For example, distancing themselves from the victim, labeling the victim as subhumans, which you know, uh, has been done by the Nazis, for example, which I think is one of the most popular um, just examples there, unfortunately, that, uh, you know, we have not been talking about humans or they have not been talking about humans when they were referring to Jews, but rather like um, rats and, and what, what, what did they use? Uh, not parasites, but... Um, you know, something like that. You know, something that you just don't want to have in your life and or in your house. And uh, no matter what the fuck you're doing, you don't want to have that. So they have been referring to these people uh, using these terms. Focusing on details and operations and numbing with alcohol or drugs. Yeah, you know, because you don't see things properly then. Uh, when there is a strong will to believe, some perpetrators leveraging small kernels of truth just to keep dapping themselves people will settle for any and this by the way is a quote people will settle for any vaguely plausible argument when they want badly enough to believe that their hurtful actions are justified yes we are justifying everything no matter what the fuck we are doing we can somehow justify it which is a pretty fucked up thing but we are always doing it and guilty is unfairly an assault in our culture and guilty is a strongly pro-social behavior that underpins our communities Highly individualistic American society, says Baumeister, favors individual favoring high self-esteem and scoffs at community supporting guilt. The Kafkaesque, the twist to safe appearance, as, or appearances, appearances, um, to stave off, I think it is stave, I don't know, stave off guilty and to feel like nobody was doing anything wrong, German authorities at times pro-secure German camp officers who killed Jews without written consent. Thus, in the camps where Jews were sent to be killed by thousands, some were being prose uh, prosecuted for killing Jews. I don't even know what prosecuted means, so I'm going to look it up. Content not available. Strafrechtlich verfolgt. I see, now I get it. Um, being, uh, what? Thus, in the camps where Jews were sent to be killed by the thousands, some were being prosecuted for killing Jews. The stave of guilty and to feel like nobody was doing anything wrong. German authorities at times pro camp officers who killed Jews without written consent. Without written consent. What does consent mean? I do just really want to get that. Why can't I have some English translation? You know? Anyway. Um, so were they verbally consented? You know? But those trials served to remind everyone that there was a method and a moral in what they were doing. Hmm. I do want to say, and I uh, actually don't really like to, to quote unquote admit that, but I do think that the Nazis were quite intelligent in terms of, um, well, the just higher parts of the whole regime um, controlling and or, well, yeah, basically controlling and or leading the whole quote-unquote operation, um, they have done just a really good job at, um, you know, making people feel good about whatever they did, you know, and, and making people also feel like, okay, they really want to do that, you know, even though maybe deeply inside them they actually didn't want to do that. But yeah, of course, a lot of people didn't want to do what they what they were doing in the end, but, but of course, you know, there's people saying and there's people doing and whatnot, but if you really 
I don't know. Like it is always, it's always hard for me to believe that people. Uh, I don't know. Like, well, yeah. Of course, there is like okay. I want to save myself, so I'm so I'm killing other people to just save myself and my family. But, but yeah, I know it is always a thing that it's hard to explain. It really is. But I, I feel like that. You know, you can say something, and you can do something, and you can also do something without just then being killed yourself, I guess. So, yeah, it, it is a difficult conversation, though, and or a difficult um, discussion. Bystanders support of evil. Not taking a side of means taking the side of evil. Not taking sides often means taking the side of the evil. Evildoers will both feel emboldened to keep on going physically and morally emboldened because if nobody protested, then it must not have been too wrong. Writes Baumeister, and this is a quote, The victims of evil and violence depend on bystanders to bear witness to what is happening and take a stand against it. It is the only way. More wisdom nuggets. Uh, perpetrators feel justified. Perpetrators often believe to be totally or almost totally justified in their violent response. Often perpetrators perceive themselves as under attacks by their victims. Yeah, you know, which just really makes it feel okay. You know, okay, you know, these people are always want, also want to do something to me, so I'm doing something to them first. Which is a fucking dumbass thing, but, but yeah. Victims see things in black and white and... <clears throat> and clear right and wrong, while perpetrators see a lot more gray areas. Victims' accounts often describe perpetrators as deliberately malicious, while perpetrators' accounts very rarely describe their actions as mean. Some evildoers see themselves as victims. Many perpetrators, including serial killers, see themselves as victims of the world, which once again just really makes it okay to then be such a person, I would say. Blurred lines of guilt. The lines between victims and perpetrators can often blur in the case of mutual escalation, leading to the final act of violence. Serial killers are not genetically different. Serial killers are far from typical and uh, represent a special case, yet some cultures and era produce more of them, suggesting the environment can push more people into this exceptional behavior. Sexual sadism is rare. Most people and in S and E S and M, I'm sorry are there for the masochism. In S and M clubs, there are three to four times more masochists, I guess, than sadists, and most sadists seem to have acquired it after having to be submissive first. We feel guiltier for unintended action. This is because people prepare their rationalization in advance for their intended wrongdoing. Groups of victims are rarely uh, monolithic. People tend to see X versus Y and group everyone in those two groups together, but in reality, both victim and aggressor groups are often heavily divided. Cons of the book, and then there is a little bit of a review. Um, too lenient towards abusive man? Question mark. The concept that in violent relationships both spouses contribute to the violence might be true. Yet at times, Baumeister seems to fail to understand that the majority of controlling people and abusive individuals are actually men. That's still not to say that in many cases female partners might not contribute to the violence, but still most controlling and abusive partners are men. Arthur Shawcross possible mistake. The author says that many serial killers bred from the Vietnam War. He uses Arthur Shawcross as an example, but when I researched him, the Wikipedia page says that he never saw active combat. Hmm. Interesting. Gangs depending on a neighborhood's sound. Or neighborhood sounded silly. Uh, I wasn't convinced by Baumeister's idea that the neighborhood supports the gangs with food and shelter, and thus the gangs are dependent on the neighborhood, giving the later more power. Heat promotes violence. Baumeister says that heat promotes violence that uh, didn't sound credible to me, and upon checking, the link is indeed tenuous and no final proof is available. Interesting. Pessimistic view the world is getting worse and unfounded. Contrary to Mr. Pink in his The Better Angels of Our Nature, Baumeister believes the world is getting worse and evil is increasing. I disagree, however, he might be right that future generations might think of 20th and 21st generations as evil for their consumption and pollution. Yes, this could <laughs> definitely be the case. Like, yeah. Um, evil review. 
Evil by Ray Barmaster is a monumental work. It's one of those rare treasure troves of information that excites me for all the new wisdom it helps me acquire. Because of its great work in connecting evil and group dynamics, I elect evil as one of the foundational books for the power moves. Check the best book collections or get the book on Amazon. And yeah, this is actually it with this summary. And um, yeah, I've kind of not been that well in terms of going through it. It, take, or it took me quite some time, to be honest, which I'm very sorry for. Um, but yeah, I do hope that you've been able to learn something. I do hope that you've been able to get something out of it. I think I have, um, even though I just forget just a lot of things, you know, uh, just I think 90% of the book summaries I went through, I've forgotten about the information right after I've recorded it. You know, I basically should go through them on my own and or once afterwards and, and then whatnot to really get the information. But yeah, it is fine. It is okay. And I do truly hope that the audio is fine once again. And, and yeah, I wish you the best health of happiness and also success and also hope that you are reminding yourself on your, how you are going to be remembered, which basically means your legacy and basically means just being a nice person and then being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. Three other questions that I'm having for you are, why are you here? What are you trying to change and what is bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. Um, yeah. Three other questions that I'm having for you are, why are you here? What are you trying to change and what's bothering you the most? These three questions are hopefully going to show you your purpose and maybe even a business idea. And I don't think that I've said it twice. But yeah, one last thing that I'm having for you is, what could you essentially say to another person that is indeed going to change their life? Because, uh, yeah, we all can say something, I believe. And um, with that being said, I'm hopefully going to see you the next time. And yeah. Bye-bye. Please take care of yourself, your family members, and all your loved ones. Bye-bye.